Yes, we are uh, live now. Can start. Let me allow everyone. Yes, Gandhi sir, we can start. Just a second, Gandhi sir, just a second. <clears throat> Tina, madam, could you please uh, unmute yourself so that I can make you the host? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. This, Gandhi sir, you are the host. Gandhi sir, please... Uh, by mistake, you have been allotted the host. Could you please transfer it to Tina, madam? Just a second. She's unmuted, so you can. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, by which name you are there, madam? Uh, Tina. Okay, I'll just change my PC right now. I'll just I'll put my video on too. I had a problem with the other laptop. Uh, I have made you host, check. Yes, I'm the host now. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Should we start, Nair, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall I start, sir? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the last session of the day. It is with great pride I introduce our next uh, guest, the Doyen of Intellectual Properties in India, Dr. Gopa Kumar Nair. Dr. Nair is a PhD from the prestigious National Chemical Laboratory, Pune, and has a diploma in management and patent law. He also holds a law degree from the Mumbai University. In his distinguished career spanning 40 years, Dr. Nair has served as a direct director, managing director and chairman of various public limited pharma companies and also served on various industry associations for more than 35 years. Uh, the latest being the president of the Indian Drug Manufacturer Association that is IDMA. Dr. Nair is also the editor and editorial board member of various publications and journals relating to pharma, biotech, and chemicals, including the IDMA Bulletin and Indian Drugs. In the field of intellectual properties, Dr. Nair was the Dean of Institute of Intellectual Property Studies at Hyderabad in India. And presently, he heads his own IP boutique firm, Gopa Kumar Nair Associates, and is also the CEO of Patent Gurukul a reputed and well-known training center for patents. Dr. Nair is a registered patent and trademark agent and also a scientific advisor to the patent office of the Patent Rules 2003. Without taking any further time, I would like to welcome Dr. Gopakumar Gopa Nair and also hand over the stage to him. I would like to convey to the delegates that Dr. Nair will be talking about patent mining in today's lecture. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Monica Rao. Good afternoon, uh, faculties, ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed grateful to Dr. Santosh Gandhi and Dr. Monica Rao for uh, making it possible for me to address you this afternoon on a subject uh, very close to my heart. You might wonder what is why, why patent mining is so very important. This was all mining. Mining is a, not a, a new subject for you. Mining is to do with valuable properties. You mine for diamonds. You mine for uh, oil. You mine for uh, uh, it, those um, uh, 
precious metals and minerals these are all um, to do with properties so the properties there are property are two type tangible and intangible properties and uh, the tangible properties are the ones which are physically responsible uh, 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 responding to senses you can feel them you can touch them you can taste them you can smell them these are all uh, real properties and these there are many many theories about properties famous uh, legal luminaries like salmon hopes blackstone and others have come up with various theories of properties property is becoming property when it is having an ownership ownership of something is essential to be called a property so all these we will cover maybe in some other time but we are going to go closer to another form of property which has intangible properties those are now called intellectual properties these were called earlier as copyrights and industrial properties consequent to the uruguay round where they get general agreement on trade and tariff international trade uh, related rules have been amended to include intellectual properties in them and we came up with wto trips and other agreements trips is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights and the all the intellectual property rights were entrusted to wipo world intellectual property organization for management of the same and uh, india became signatory to wto and trips in 1995 and in 2005 we became a full fledged uh, trips compliant intellectual property uh, practicing country so patents became once again very very important in our uh, in our professional life so basically mining mine mining is very important word in uh, uh, the practice of uh, patent practice patent practice so there is a different uh, uh, slides which are shooting some type of patents the one in the main title is showing mining of uh, metals or minerals or anything valuable from the earth next one is showing another form of mining the mines can also be so valuable for uh, collecting or for uh, uh, excavating but this is another form of mining that there are mine fields which will explode if you trespass into it in legal language it is called infringement trespass in in a real property is called infringement in intellectual property how to survive a mine field this is a very important thing so basically patent mining helps to find out how to work around how to walk around where the field is full of mines and that is in our our um, terminology called pnis and fco patent non infringement status and freedom to operate very often as intellectual property lawyers we are approached by various clients to give us give them our opinion on pnis and fco that is like the gentleman here is trying to see where is the mines how to step not to step over the mines we are guiding them to remain safe from any of the patent mine fields patents give protection monopoly and the claims of the patent specifications give boundaries which cannot be trespassed by uh, a competitor or a uh, person who is not aware of the boundaries next slide please so basically these are all to do with uh, patent uh, mining it is almost like uh, 
having to avoid pitfalls and trying to stay clear of any um, potential uh, legal um, litigation or legal disputes. So basically, pattern mining is very important in um, uh, intellectual property or pattern management. Next slide, please. So basically, you. Uh, I hope somebody uh, in your um, uh, day's proceedings yesterday and today may have um, covered some of this intellectual property uh, leads to rights. As I mentioned, the property has to have an ownership. The person who owning the property of intellectual property, they just like any other property, has all the rights associated with it. And these intellectual properties are generated from an idea which comes from creativity. Creativity generates uh, valuable ideas. And if you are able to capture them, they can be expressed in different forms. Uh, individual, individuals and uh, artists and others, they when they express their idea, uh, they can lead it in the form of a um, writing, in the form of a lyric, in the form of singing, from the form of painting or in the form of sculpture. They can all protect it through copyright. And those who are leading the idea leads to a technical content and innovation and invention. They can approach the patent office for uh, a patent with a patent application. And if it is meeting the requirement, you can get a patent. The, and the, if, if you have a product which you want to identify for its quality and identity as belonging to yourself, you can trademark it, you can give a mark and protect it as a brand. And this uh, appearance of the external appearance, ornamental appearance of anything that you make, if you want to protect, it can be protected through design, industrial design. So in, in, in US, it is called a design patent, but in India, it is called industrial design. And with, in spite of all this, if you want to keep it confidential, you can have it as a trade secret, but trade secrets can only be protected through common law, IPC, CPC, CRPC, et cetera. The other forms of uh, uh, expression of ideas uh, can be protected through copyright, Copyright Act 1957. Patents can be protected through Patents Act 1970 and provisions thereof and, and the rules thereof. And uh, trademarks, the, the brands that you are owning can be protected through Trademark Act 1999 and designs can be protected through Design Act 2000. There is a clear difference between patents and designs vis-a-vis -vis copyright and trademarks. What is the difference? Copyrights and trademarks, you acquire the ownership the moment you express them, the moment you put it to use. You make it into public domain and people identify it as belonging to you, you have an inherent right. However, protecting through the respective acts gives you additional benefit that the government is on your side. You can sue a person who is infringing through the provisions of the act. Otherwise, you will have to use same like common law, which is for trade secrets and confidential information. So basically, even though you have an inherent right in copyright and trademarks, protecting them helps you, gives you better protection. But protecting them or registering them through the respective acts gives you better protection. However, patents and designs, for patents and designs, nobody will give you a patent or a design protection just because you have put something in public domain. You have to make an application you have to uh, follow all the procedures. You have to meet the patentability criteria to get a patent granted. And unlike copyright and trademark, which you get ownership the moment you put it in public domain, please remember that the moment you put something in public domain as a patentable or a design protectable material, you put in public domain, you lose your opportunity to protect it because anything that has gone into public domain cannot be 
granted a patent cannot be will not be eligible for a patent or a design or protection so basically you have to be very very careful if you intend to patent something please don't publish it please don't release the publication ahead of you are filing at least what you call a provisional patent which we will come some some time later so same same thing happened to design any design that you have released in the market any design which is available in public domain cannot be protected under designs act so both has to be done before you put in use or put in public uh, domain uh, make it known to public next slide please this is a patent portfolio uh, there are many many more uh, like other than trade secrets confidential information reputation impurity profiles of this uh, materials there are so many uh, your um, client database many many type of databases all these things your regulatory dossiers these are all can be kept confidential but there now in india unlike in usa regulatory dossiers don't have protect protection because there is a under section 39 of the uh, trips trade related aspects of intellectual property rights there is a protection for data so data exclusivity is there in usa we have india has not agreed to data exclusivity for fear of misuse abuse and extension of uh, patent protection period by going for data exclusivity so there is no data exclusivity in india but government of india is presently um, um, bringing in a data protection act which is pending in the parliament next slide <clears throat> this is this is an a demonstration of a an example that a single item can be protected by various forms of intellectual properties this is a inhaler in uh, of course it is about 25 20 25 year old uh, model many many more newer models have come but this is i am showing as an example at that time this was novel it was novel and inventive this is a, a inhaler device which can have it used multiple times so it was called uh, by cipla it was introduced as an in innovation by cipla it is called multi inhaler because it has a multi inhaler word was first introduced it was protected under trademark trademark that brand name and the symbol that you can have a trademark protected as a name or as a logo and uh, that is the multi inhaler protection for trademark is uh, uh, available to this product and this product being having uh, technical features um, the novel and inventive uh, features for which require which meet patentability requirement it was granted a patent number as shown above Uh, 739 5821 the design the yeah, external appearance of this multi inhaler being unique at that time has been granted a design protection as you see here the package insert how to use it optimal 30 doses how to use how to operate it etc it was uh, in the attached package insert so information leaflets package inserts are protectable by copyright when india <clears throat> implemented the 2005 product patent regime and other intellectual properties fully there have been many many show cause notices and lawsuits <clears throat> against generic companies who were copying the product insert of the innovator company only by changing the name of their brand and reproducing the contents as such many companies were issued copyright notice and of course <clears throat> when they approached us we had to tell them how to come out of copyright infringement by paraphrasing it reorganizing their uh, various uh, uh, paragraphs and changing the language then you can avoid copyright infringement in your research publications also copyright becomes a major issue because of plagiarism so research ethics research um, <coughs> guidelines uh, 
from each uh, individual research journal, there may be certain guidelines. Over and above that, most journals subject themselves to plagiarism check, which is called plagiarism, but spelt as plagiarism. So basically, this is uh, all subject to copyright. Over and above all these protectable uh, forms of intellectual property, there is something called trade secret or know-how, which is confidential information or undisclosed information. So how can there be an undisclosed information in a product called multi healer where everything is now protected? The trade secret in this was the ratio between the particle size of the carrier vehicle and the active ingredient and the excipients. These were optimized to have maximum absorption in the uh, lung system or in, into the uh, passage uh, where you are inhaling. So this is a, this was a technical know-how which is undisclosed, but which made the product the, the the user benefit was optimized through the uh, additional uh, undisclosed information. Next slide, please. What, what is a patent? May I I hope this is nothing new to you, but many people, many of the earlier speakers may have already uh, shown this to you. But uh, patent is a protection given to a patentee for an invention for a limited term. Limited term was different for different countries and different product fields prior to 1995, before globalization and harmonization and the advent of TRIPS regime. So now everywhere the term is 20 years from the date of first application, first filing. This, it can be a provisional filing or a complete patent application, but what is filed the first time, that is called a priority date. From priority date, you get 20 years protection, provided you maintain the, um, pay the maintenance fees and maintain the uh, patent. Uh, right to exclude others. It deals, the patent gives a right to exclude others. The moment your patent is granted to you, uh, or the moment you are filing a patent application, from that time the ownership starts. The moment the patent gets published, you are putting others to notice that this invention belongs to you. And once it is granted, you have a right to sue others. These rights are also called negative rights because the moment you get a patent, everybody else gets a negative right not to practice it. So this is in legal terms called a negative right. Or the difference between trademark and other forms of intellectual property rights is the moment if you stop using a trademark, <clears throat> the, you, anybody can try you know, can infringe you or anybody can challenge you saying that since you are not using your trademark should be removed from the register. But patent, even if you have a uh, you are not practicing it you will still continue to enjoy the patent. It is a negative right. Owner has a qualified right to use the invention. Under sec uh, section seven and eight of TRIPS, there are certain additional um, expectations that, for example, if it is a medicine, it should be available to the patient. So help and other areas uh, will have some exemptions, which we will see in due course. Next slide. These are, this is a very favorite slide of mine, three statutory pillars for patentability. <clears throat> the patentability, grant of a patent, the building is standing on three pillars. One is novelty. Novelty it means it should be novel, means there should not be any single prior art which describes your invention as such. If such a description is there, then you lose novelty. As long as exactly similar or, or ex very closely equivalent prior art is not there, then you have novelty. However, the next requirement, inventive step. Inventive step is also known as non-obviousness. Your invention should not be obvious to a person skilled in the art. This is described under section 21JA that a person, an engineer, 
of a mechanical engineer who has similar qualification can, if he sees an, a, an invention and says that, oh, this is a, in such and such location, it is available. This has been taught in the class. This was described in a particular seminar. Then it loses its inventive step. It becomes obvious. So what, what is the difference between novelty and inventive step? Both are prior art based. One is single prior art. The other one is combination of all prior arts. Together, if it is still uh, obvious, then it is not patentable. That is why it is called mosaicing of prior art for inventive step. The third requirement is industrial application. Industrial application must be met also because your invention should not be just theoretical. It should demonstrate at least one way of doing it. It should have some utility. Somebody must may be having a use for it. So these three requirements are essential for a patent. Next slide, please. So invention can be patented as mentioned. I have already described it in detail. It, uh, it must distinguish from the state of the art. It must be not obvious to a person skilled in the art, must be useful or must have utility. But to an extent, it is called uh, uh, patents are called utility patents mostly. So that is because it has a, it should have a utility. Next slide, please. So there are in Indian patents, there in the trips under Article 27.2, there are many, a, a few conditions where which are exemptions. So, but India has expanded these exemptions to make the Indian patent law more balanced between the user and the inventor. So benefits the, of the invention should travel to the users more liberally and should not be frivolous patents or abuse of the protection should not be available uh, in certain conditions. So, next slide, please. So there are various inventions not patentable. What are not inventions have been listed out specifically in India to give a more balanced patent law. Next, please. I am not going into the details of this unless there is a discussion sometime later. Next slide, please. So basically, this is my favorite uh, slide. This is uh, designed by us. Patentability filter. Patentability filter means if you have a research project, if you have a subject matter which you want to put to test if it is patentable, you have to like a funnel, you are having different layers of filtering material, you pour it from the top. The prior use, prior publication, prior disclosure must not be there. It should pass through that test. Then comes industrial applicability. It should be industrially applicable. Then it should go through the novelty test. There should not be a single prior art. Go through the non-obviousness test, inventive step of the mosaicing of all knowledge as on that date, also on particular date. Very often what happens if you see a patent application still pending after three or four or five years because the technology is moving forward so fast, it may not be um, non-obvious. It may not be obvious at that date, but you have to see obviousness or inventiveness at the date of filing. So basically, that is very important. In India, Section 3, non-patentability non under Section 3 also to be uh, uh, cleared. Then written description and enablement requirements. Every patent application should describe the invention in a very clear and very non-contentious um, um, non matter. And it has to be uh, meeting the requirement of novelty and inventive step through the examples. You have to show specifically how the patent application is, uh, um, uh, is being, patent application is accompanied by a, the patent specification. That specification should be containing the written description and it should be uh, finally concluding with the claims and the abstract. So this should for a temperature. So basically, the um, written description is very, very important. And uh, just by making it only, uh, these are called enablement requirements. The, when you are making the claim drafting, claims are written, 
the specification should support the claims and the claim should be the, what are you claiming should be available in the description of the patent application where is the exemption to, for this written description there are some exemption for written description when your invention is a microorganism <coughs> some of these microorganisms etc are not describable so then you are exempted from describing it then what you have to do you have to deposit that microorganism in a depository under budapest treaty yeah, india has a few depositories in india internationally there are many depositories you can deposit and get an accreditation number that number will have to be quoted in the patent application uh, while you are drafting the uh, specification once you uh, put the accreditation number any person interested can make an application for uh, and with of course subject to material transfer agreements yeah, you can access it and make use of in your progression of your research and science, um, other science, scientific act activities so basically that is the exemption for written description then with application in form 1 specification in form 2 along with claims and abstract you make a application it will be subject to patent prosecution patent prosecution is the procedure from the day you make an application till it granted or rejected what happens in patent office is called patent prosecution so thereafter once a patent is granted then you have the right or duty to maintain it if you don't maintain your patent get lapsed if you maintain it till the period you maintain it or till 20 years you will have you are right monopoly rights to prevent others from practicing it or you will have a right to license it out to people who want to use it so basically these are uh, your uh, intellectual property rights patent rights you are also a right to defend your patent after grant if somebody want to um, either uh, oppose it or you somebody want to revoke it because it is standing in the way of their uh, market operations so these are all the uh, basic um, uh, activities related to patent next one now i will come to patent mining patent mining <clears throat> patent mining is uh, is the subject of today's uh, discussion and uh, pet, why why what is patent mining how do you patent mine uh, do um, uh, mining of patents etc we will deal with them uh, now so next uh, next slide please how why and from where so basically <clears throat> innovations and inventions lead to patents how do why do you innovate and invention uh, do, to go for inventions often it is the necessity there is a demand in the marketplace there is a user need somebody is uh, missing out on some type of improvement or some type of uh, uh, gadgets or some type of product or processes so you come up with the invention based on the market need very often the necessity based market based innovations are most valuable because the moment you come up with a innovation and you make it uh, you patent protect it and then launch it in the marketplace you have immediate it becomes a blockbuster immediate demand is there your market uh, share really goes up for your product and your performance so the other method of uh, innovation is expertise in house expertise you make innovations based on in house available your talent your available facilities in your organization those are less success in the marketplace because you have not evaluated its need in the in 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 user need user needs so basically <clears throat> the first form is more successful than a pure in house expertise based patent application so our patent uh, granted patents Grand, the first type of patents get more licensing opportunities more commercialization opportunities while the second one becomes more academic 
the last one is the compulsions many corporate corporate organizations because of competition in the market competition because competitor is putting you into a um, difficult situation into a, a negative um, your growth is negative you are facing constraints in the marketplace because of competitor then you try to improve upon uh, the product and come up one up against the competitor that is the under the market compulsions the most practiced innovation is incremental innovation which is based on prior art in the, today's world where everybody is on internet everybody is on web based uh, searches and web based activities 95% of innovations which are coming out are incremental innovations because you are making some improvement on what is already in the public domain these are not much valuable but very often even incremental innovations become valuable if it is meeting a gap a need in the marketplace so there are examples for example um, um, um medicinal preparation tablets which are to be taken three times a day suddenly now the maximum uh, number of uh, uh, tablet dose or capsule dosage oral dosage forms are now on sustained release modified release um, or different type of form of release and some of them which need immediate effect they go for immediate release so some some which are mouth melting some of them are buckle so different different type of improvements are being made to the benefit the patient or the consumer these are uh, incremental innovations sometimes they are beyond incremental innovations because there are more technology involved serendipity serendipity is a very uh, very uh, very occasional uh, invention it is accidental often path breaking you are looking for something you got something different a very uh, interesting anecdote is there but uh, provided uh, i don't think the time may not permit so i am not saying the story about serendipity there are many many stories about serendipity but uh, serendipitous inventions often land up becoming very valuable it is something which you have been looking for something else you have been doing a research on some x uh, product or x process you land up with a y product it is a deviation as you know in a pharmaceutical industry you form sops so that you are no deviation but when a deviation comes everybody is disappointed you throw it away but nobody investigates why it deviated what is the deviation product is it better than what i have been wanting to uh, get through the sop so those are the serendipitous inventions very often this discarded some people succeed in locating the serendipitous invention which is more valuable than you have been looking for so this is a very important um, uh, mode of uh, invention disruptive innovations these are breakthrough innovations for example kodak had the camera then polaroid came with the instant camera then uh, people came with digital cameras now uh, everything has gone into oblivion because of the mobile phones which are now operating as cameras so basically people who have sitting on very big gold mines of their current technologies they for they forget or ignore to make improvements or look forward visionary approach to avoid being obsolete and because somebody else is already working on disruptive innovations which may put the other person out of business so these are very very valuable the similar equivalent in pharmaceutical industry or biotechnology industry are <clears throat> drug discovery drug discovery research very few people are presently working on original drug discovery research the nearest is me to research that means if there is a um, um, erlotinib there will be so many nips 
imagine if there are lots of nips so many so many nips will come due by modifying the molecule and uh, which is not mentioned in the patent applications uh, um, original formula and uh, then they come up with me to innovations so this is uh, re reasonably easy but still you need deep pockets because phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 trials and dosier is etc are required for that also b2 also but really drug discovery research is very um, the frequency and the um, number of uh, drug discovery innovations are, are very few especially also because of the regulatory um, uh, hurdles or high costs so basically these are uh, very very uh, important ones value what value added multi billion dollar uh, activities so both in uh, expenditure as well as in uh, beneficial uh, results in uh, incomes so basically the simplest form of uh, uh, indian form of uh, innovation is jugads i was in uh, wto uh, uh, geneva and uh, a us supreme court judge was a chief guest his subject of lecture the was the indian jugads these were called frugal innovation mostly these are of indian origin little tweaking here and there and make, make each common man's life much more uh, much more simple much more easy so basically there are so many examples a, 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 a school going son was seeing his father toiling in the uh, field day in and day out doing multiple steps of uh, tilling then seeding then transplanting then manuring all these things so he devised a cycle based three wheeler based uh, of course basic based on a cycle concept and everything was being done by the same uh, equipment multiple uh, steps were being handled by that he designed for his father there in kerala there are um, innovation on um, coconut climbing just application of a lever takes you up the coconut now many of the coconut climbers in kerala are women so basically because there there is no threat or no danger and it is very simple to operate next slide please incremental innovations are based on existing knowledge as i already mentioned there is a knowledge explosion today there is a internet in house r and d and uh, market needs very often if a research guide is there um, and you are for example i was the first nmr uh, based uh, uh, research scientist in ncl the ncl nmr and the sibaga ye nmr came together in 1962 and i took my um, phd on nmr applications in, uh, uh, few string systems <clears throat> and uh, the subsequently about 8 to 10 persons continued the field of electronic distribution in few string systems conjugation and many other uh, aspects and they all took phd on the same so most important best form of research even in incremental form is as i mentioned already based on market needs drug discovery research is based on out of the box creative thinking visualization beyond the horizons i call it you uh, most of the universities and research organizations have the word tamaso ma jodar gamaya there is lead me from darkness to light in breakthrough research in drug discovery research you are what you are doing is bringing out something in the dark finding a searching for something in the dark and bringing it out into the light making it into public domain before doing that in the way you file for patent application and then go on improving it on with subsequent uh, applications so this is a very typical example because 
darkness and light as you all know there is a very close relationship you know the black hole theory and basically the drug discovery research can only be done with original absolutely original search in the darkness and bringing it the innovation to light next slide please so basically this is a very this is one of my most favorite slides what you see here is a very famous book rembrandt in the attic means uh, in it in italy there was a very very big palatial bungalow built by the grandfather this was the grandson was fed up with the vastness of the the palace and he sold it out for a small value because it was all getting dilapidated and when the new owner was dismantling it when he was wanting for the redevelopment he found many things wrapped up in the attic so when he informed the grandson he went and looked at it there were all paintings which were covered in cloth so he took it to a valuer valuer said these are worth millions or billions of dollars these are original paintings by rembrandt so this sort of hidden hidden values are there with each of you each of the uh, researchers they have to only awaken their research talent for um, looking for uh, original ideas and creative ideas and convert them into inventions innovations patents etc so unlocking hidden value is very important and very often in your own department or in your own university there will be people who are potential innovators innovators they may have ideas but which of course you need to have a uh, innovation cell you need to have an incubator you have to have a, a tendency to uh, support startups and that startups have to be enabled with other requirements fund, funding promotion um making it known to the public etc those support systems will have to be provided for such uh, innovative startups so survival of the fittest will mean mastering secrets of ip and like modern day alchemists using them to convert knowledge into gold next slide please yeah so basically patent mining is related to identifying and extracting inventions which are already patented determination of patentability over the state of the art these are the purposes and and the processes for patent mining analyze and study underutilized inventions develop new knowledge research project planning very important patent mining is very important before a research research project is um, finalized you planning time you go, go for a patent uh, uh, mining and uh, then only take it so that you are not going for reinventing the wheel as mentioned already i don't know that slide has come the 90% of the uh, the literature is in public domain in the patent related uh, publications understand another one is understand unmet needs and gaps in the marketplace overcoming existing problems avoid infringement stepping into the mine field which is the subject of the day one of the areas of uh, patent mining is to avoid infringement stepping into the mine field of the uh, protected uh, uh, technologies and also to work around work around already granted patent territories and not step into the boundaries of the granted patent claims so this is a very that is what i we were referring earlier to pnis and fto patent non infringement status and freedom to operate 
opinions. This is one of the major activities that we are as a patent attorney doing. Identifying resourceful persons for potential to become invents, inventors. This can also be uh, further strengthen your, the organization's patent activity. Next slide, please. So very important is uh, uh, in, due in patent mining, due diligence prior to project commencement, as already mentioned, avoids wasteful investments on defending infringement suits. Very often what you do is you come up with a project, you come up with a patent application, you get a patent granted. Then you find a grant of a patent doesn't mean that you can operate in the marketplace. A granted patent can still be an infringing of already granted another patent. So this is very less understood. Patent mining is very essential to see that your patent is not sitting on somebody else's patented territory. In which case, you have got a patent, but you cannot operate because the other patent is covering the territory. You cannot move your uh, little finger because it is already uh, granted, but it is surrounded by a field of protected uh, claims. That patent mining also saves avoidable litigation costs. Litigation costs are Patent costs, if it is one rupee, litigation costs are thousand rupees. Today, litigation costs, not only in United States, but in India also has run into crores. I was associated with a product called Imatinib, Mesailate, Gleevec. The Gleevec patent application was filed by Novartis in India. CIPLA filed a pre-grant opposition because an earlier patent application was already filed by them before India became product patent uh, compliant in 1995-2005. So that patent was invalidating the new application. On behalf of CIPLA in 2000, uh, 2006, I opposed this uh, in uh, the patent application under pre-grant and we were successful against Mr. Nalini Chidambaram, who was representing uh, Novartis. Thereafter, after six to seven years, it, the went, it went all the way to Supreme Court. Supreme Court ratified the decision that the imaginary patent application of Novartis cannot be granted in India. But the entire cost ran into more than 100 crores for even one company who was opposing. There were multiple companies opposing. So litigation costs are very high. So one has to avoid litigation as far as possible. Patent mining helps that. Determining vulnerability, weakness, and strength of constraining patent. Very often, when you are when you are you or your licensed uh, corporate uh, organization goes for marketing a product, you find there could be some constraining patent. Then you have to evaluate the vulnerability, if it is vulnerable, you can revoke it, go, move for revocation, or you can, if it is weak, and you may ignore it, and if it is strong, then you may approach for a grant of a license, voluntary license, failing which you may go for a compulsory license. Helps in the, the, the patent mining helps in designing timelines for filing dossiers and product launch dates, etc. Very often, you will have to, if it is a very strong patent, uh, then you may go for uh, getting it licensed. Or if you have a very strong patent, you may give it out for licensing, etc. And followed by um, regulatory support and uh, product launch. Next slide, please. Patentability analysis and PNIS and FTO, as already mentioned, uh, is a very essential part of patent mining. Next slide. These are more on the macro level. At the macro level, patent mining will have <coughs> patent mining or <coughs> patent landscaping <coughs> helps for finding out targets for acquisition, mergers and acquisitions. 
you can see which company you want which question portfolio is it suitable for you and you would like to add them to your uh, existing pension portfolio and your operations in your field then you may go for acquiring that or go for a uh, seek for a merger sporting specific research scientists and talents in the field of interest very often the researchers of your interest can best be seen as inventors in by patent mining the you search for the same field that the space very specialized field you can see who are the inventors and you may invite one of them to join your team or vice versa you can also if you are a research scientist you can also look at companies or corporations or research uh, organizations which are doing the field of your interest you may want to join them this also in in a vice versa uh, it is a beneficial in by patent mining we identify licensing in options or so if you are urgently in need you don't want to waste your time doing all the research this is available in the patent uh, uh, landscape you acquire the patents uh, in a, it will speed up your commercialization seeking partnership opportunities you might want to say that this, there is a matrimonial type of uh, opportunity in the patent literature you can find a potential partner and uh, work with them uh, especially in advancing further research this has happened across the continents there are companies in usa or australia or um, germany many of them were coming together through patent mining patent research patent related analysis and deciding to partner next slide please because as you you might not you must remember patents are territorial in nature if there is a german patent and it has no equivalent in australia a nearest patent is available in australia which has no german patent you can still work uh, find partnerships and work them together and take the entire technology forward by jointly filing further applications avoiding patent mine fields and related uh, operations the following steps are very important patenting should be done if your innovation is patentable please remember patenting is a, even though it appears patenting is very costly way, that is the first impression but patenting is by far the cheapest step for protecting your invention so that you are avoiding further uh, uh, litigation as i mentioned or any other uh missing out on the opportunity licensing in or licensing out if negotiable voluntary licensing you can look for voluntary licensing on exclusive or non exclusive basis compulsory licensing if voluntary licensing doesn't work and you are still in need for a because if you, for example you have um, presently very very important um, in the current context of the covid pandemic the government of india and south africa have approached wto for a patent waiver for treatments or including for vaccines for covid in today's newspaper it says that australia is also supporting most countries have supported the patent waiver including the the most unexpected support has come from united states but germany is still opposing they don't want the voluntary the, the patent waiver they are saying let india and south africa go for a compulsory license and they doesn't want to go for compulsory licensing because india is now negotiating for mutual trade agreements with usa and other countries so basically there is a, a compulsory licensing is now considered as the last option and when you are patent is standing in your way you may go for a opposition before grant of the patent or after grant of the patent immediately within one year or go for a revocation if patent is vulnerable it should not have been granted in the first place according to you counter claims when you are sued when, when infringement is already you have stepped on the minefield you are sued for infringement then you may make a counter claim saying that your mine is no more uh, um, uh, explosive 
we can uh, make it um, invalid. So you can invalidate a granted patent by filing counterclaims and proving that patent should not have been, uh, uh, the, it's, the invention was not patentable. Next slide. A study working around, uh, working around is the maximum activity that we do. Working around processes are very, very, oh, very, very openly available areas of research for academic institutions. We are helping many of our clients using our background of 30, 40 years exposure to pharma. We are uh, advising them how to work around. Of course, we don't become inventors. We only file the patient application for them, but they implement our advice. For example, Wyatt has a patent on Tigacil, and which has a, a, a patent claim uh, to be said carbohydrate is being used in that. And we advise them to use a stabilizing agent such as sulfobutyl, either beta cyclodextrin sodium, which is a reasonably unique uh, excipient. And with that, we got the patent granted for them. And we got the, um, the, the, the uh, goofy. So uh, the Gufik uh, came out of the patent infringement. The suit uh, filed by Wyatt against Gufik got settled because Gufik proved that their process is different. Next slide, please. And they are also in the marketplace and they have got a good market share because of this. Remedesphere is again a typical case study. Remedesphere had multiple patents. One was generically covered, but does not specifically disclose. That was, which is called, we call it genus and species patents. So basically, very often, genus and species patent, uh, the species patent is upheld by some courts. In some cases, the uh, species patent uh, is considered to be already covered in the genus patent, and the, the high court or Supreme Court take a stand accordingly, sometimes agreeing with the infringer, sometimes uh, agreeing with the patentee. So basically, suits have been there in both, depending on how you have drafted your claims. Next slide, please. Serendipity, I have already, there have been many, many serendipitous uh, patents. Penicillin, coumarin, uh, that is warfarin. Uh, there were um, many, many side effects becoming breakthrough indications. We, I had um, I, I had a pharmaceutical API manufacturing organization. I moved into specialty chemicals. When I, the first time in uh, uh, the internet came, I made a website for my own company where a, a typographical mistake was done by the data entry operator. And it, instead of, um, Three, three chloropropiophenone. He because the earlier one was two dash something. He put three dash chloropropiophenone. The um, Burroughs welcome welcome became Glaxo welcome. They had come up with a blood pressure drug, bupropion, and wellbutrin. And then when the the bio uh, the, what is called the um, pharmacovigilance reports in USA were very strict. Doctors gave a report that some of the patients don't want to use this drug. While some of the patients, even after getting cured, wanted to continue to use the drug. This report was perplexing the US FDA. So they inquired more into it. They found that this drug has a side effect of discontinue of tendency to not smoke. Some people wanted to continue smoking. Some people were very happy that drug was helping them to stop smoking. So immediately they called Burroughs Welcome and told them to launch the product. They didn't have another supply chain, no new manufacturer. But suddenly, Serena, um, Selena Parker, who is a buyer of the company, looked into the internet and found a new company Bombay Drugs and Pharma Limited, Mumbai. And immediately they sent a full 
dozier asking us to immediately supply the product and we didn't know why this whole big bunch of dozier came by uh, courier and my people dr vidhi patil and um, prohit and all that they immediately go to work not be because the pro pro process given by them involved cyanide potassium cyanide which was banned in gujarat because of the pollution uh, problems so we came up with a friedel craft reaction of fluorine and uh, aluminum chloride and made the product and gave it to them 1 uh, gram 2 gram 5 gram 10 gram 100 grams suddenly in about 2 to 3 months we started exporting 40 ton container lots for years together to uh, black so welcome by the time it became gsk and that is how sometimes uh, you come up with um, side effects becoming breakthrough indications if they came up with a product called uh, uh, that uh, um, the, the new brand name for belbutrin it was to indicate that uh, it is a smoking cessation product so basically there are so many examples electricity x ray radioactivity microwaves all these have been serendipitous inventions in the field of observations chance favors only the prepared mind so you have to have an a diligent diligent approach you have to be looking out for any serendipitous results which very often is lacking because everybody is now concentrating on sop and avoiding deviations in research as well as in day to day operations next slide so now it is on patent search i would request my colleague andrea fernandez to take over from you i only draw this i mentioned about this that uh, 80% of all available technical information is published in patents and often nowhere else this is a very important uh, reason why you should be going for patenting patenting is as important as research publications or more important the advantage if you are research publication you are releasing you cannot patent but if you are filing a provisional patent application then going for a research publication thereafter you have best of both worlds you can have a patent publication also you can get a patent also you can also have a research publication which should not be uh, before filing the patent application now i would request um, andrea to take over i will be available to you if at all required for any question there is one yeah query in the chat box yeah where is a query in the chat box should a life saving or beneficial invention for human being be patented like terminator gene bt gene by monsanto <laughs> i will take it up at the end okay thank you thank you dr nayan um uh, before i take you to the patent search there is one thing that i want to caution you on and the patent search that i'm going to take you through is only in the free databases and not the paid database uh for the reason that paid databases when you contact any one of them they're going to send their person to come and teach you so you if any of these paid, paid databases interest you you can always get in touch with them another reason why i'm taking you to the free databases is is the moment i finish my slide show you can go and start searching on your own you don't need expertise to start searching on it any queries that come to your mind you can start putting it in any of the dialog boxes for each of the databases and you can start doing your search so i'll take you through free databases yeah so these are the different search engines uh, on your right are the paid sites so if any one of them interests you you can always get in touch with them stn orbit derwent patent index on your left is the uspto where you can search all the us uh, patent or patent applications they are only restricted to applications that have been filed and granted at the us pto that is the us patent office e space net you can do a worldwide search the patent applications which have been filed or granted anywhere in the world you can search these wipo is world intellectual property organization 
here also you can almost do a worldwide search but you have to keep in mind that wipo where you can file your international applications that is your pct international applications these are only applications and they do not grant patent so if anybody tells you that i have got a world patent granted never believe them because there is nothing called as world patent you can only file a pct application and it will get published if you want an application to be granted it has to enter in any of the 153 national phases which are signatory to the pct pct treaty that is patent cooperation treaty then you have indian patent information retrieval system which is the indian database where you can only search indian applications which have been filed and granted you have uh, free patent online and you have google patent search also remember one thing that the free websites are the government websites as against the paid sites which are all private websites where basically they retrieve information from the government websites and they manage and prepare their own abstract and it's fed by a human being eventually so those are the paid sites these are the links uh, you don't have to buy have these links if you just put a wipo search or indian patent office search us pto patent search apo patent search these links will come up so you don't have to worry about this just put any of these in the google link and you can retrieve the link so now this is how a patent application looks like the, i have depicted only the pct international application these are the bare minimum information that each country publishes so whether it's an application which is published by indian uh, uh, patent office or the us patent office they are going to publish these information so you will have the when you do your patent search you can retrieve the applicant details so here you can see serial number 71 this application is a pct national application filed by bristol myers you can see the inventors you can see the agent who has filed this application on behalf of bms patent agents are like us we have to give our exams and we have to file a power of attorney if we are going to be filing any applications on behalf of the client you have the designated countries uh, sorry designated states in 81 and 84 so these applications so this since this is a pct application you can claim priority for all these countries and you can enter any of these countries so currently there are around approximately 138 countries you can enter each one of them based on this pct application then you have the filing date you have the publication date you also have one serial number 30 which is a priority data which means you can determine from where did this application arise from where it came from first so if you see that this priority data is a us application which means the application was first filed in us and then it was filed at the pct at the patent at the international bureau you also have the title so use of atazanavir in hiv therapy you will also have the abstract the abstract is basically a short brief summary in 150 words that you have to file which will basically describe your entire invention So, if you read the abstract, it's a method of reducing elevated plasma LDL or triglyceride levels in HIV-infected patient. So, use of atazanavir in the HIV therapy. So, this is the basic information. This is called a bibliographic page where every each of the patent offices will publish. So, what are the types of patent search? You can do a number search. You can do a name search. You can do a subject search. a legal status search and an ipc classification based search so i'll take you through each one of them patent number search if you have an application number or a granted number you can use this number in any of your databases and you can retrieve that complete application so basically the format is the country code followed by a seven or an eight digit number so i have depicted your gb2013456 which means this application belongs is an application which has been filed or granted in great britain when you have wo as a prefix it means that it is an international application which got published that is why it's a wo application de is a german application so if you have any of these numbers you can use them and you can put them in any of the databases 
So if you have a WO number, you can use it at the WIPO website and you can use it at the East Face website. And you can use it also at the Indian Patent Office website. The WO number is not going to work on the US video. GB number is not going to work in India. GB number is not going to work at the PC, uh, I'm sorry, at the US video, but it will work at the East Face Net. And it will also work if you put it in the international uh, PCT uh, database. Similarly, for German, uh, the DE application, the German one, it's, you can only retrieve the complete specification and the details of this application in eSpaceness and at the PCT W website. Number searching, if a number is, you, you retrieve a number and it has on the suffix either A1 or B. A1 means it's only published application and it's not a granted application. It's very important for you to determine whether an application has been filed and only published or whether it has been granted or not. So for example, you're doing a patent mining for a molecule that is of interest to you. You retrieve an application and that application is the one which is of interest to you. So you, you determine that this application is a huddle for you. If it's only at the publication stage, you have an option of revoking it or opposing it. If that application is only published, but it doesn't get granted, which means at the patent office itself, there is it is determined that application has no patentability attached to it. That means that you don't have to worry about this patent application at all because it was only published and not granted. Always remember the right of a patentee arises only from a granted patent and not from a published application. If an application continues to remain in a publication stage, and it doesn't get eventually granted, you don't have to worry about it. Your worries only start if the patent application is eventually granted. What is also important during patent mining is when an application is published and till the stage that it is granted, you can determine whether the claims have been amended or not, which means whether the claims have been in the same stage. So I'll give you an example. Say if the patent application was filed for a process, uh, temperature which is of 40 degrees to 60 degrees but eventually the patent get granted only at 30 degrees uh, i'm sorry only at 50 degrees first it was 40 to 60 eventually it got granted only at 50 degrees so which means that the patent is no longer protecting 60 degrees 70 degrees so you are free to use that particular process because that particular range has been disclaimed so even if the patent is granted it has been granted with a narrow set of claims so you don't have to worry about whether you're going to be infringing that granted patent or not. So this is generally for all the patent applications, A1 and B. The difference being for a WIPO application, sorry. A WIPO application, which is published as WO slash 2006 is the year of publication and the number is assigned to it. So if it's an application and it gets published as A1, it means that application is published with a search report. Dr. Nayak took you through patentability. So every patent office is going to conduct patentability analysis of your patent application, wherever you file it, whether you file it at the Indian patent office, whether you file it at the US patent office, you file it at an Australian patent, a Chinese patent, they're all going to conduct a patent search, which is called as prosecution. That search is going to reveal whether you have novelty attached to your patent invention, you have inventive step attached to your whether there is industrial application or if it falls under section four, which is inventions not patentable. So when your application at the WIPO site is published along with the search report, the ISA, which is International Search Authority is going to generate international search report. That search report is going to identify through category citations. So you have X category citations, you'll have Y category citations, you have A and T category citations. You can determine from that search report whether your invention is worthy of being granted or not. If you feel your search report is not very strong, then you either amend the claims when you get into the national phases or you as well as abandon your PCT application. So you will have an idea whether you want to enter any of the national phases because this is eventually going to save a lot of money. So that is the search report, which is attached with A1. If it publishes as only A2, which means only the application got published, the search report was not published. The search report will eventually be published as A3. Then you have A4, which is search report, which is generated by the EPO in addition to the search report done by the 
PCT. So this was about number searching. Name searching, like the name suggests, if you have the inventor's name, if you have the company's name, you use those names in the name searching. So, for example, if any inventor is of interest to you, you, you want to see whether uh, what is the invention that is traveled along with him from company to company. So, if we usually know that any employee, any researcher or scientist is not going to stick with one company. So, sometimes there is a tech transfer along that goes with him. So, if you do an inventor search, you will you will come up with say four or five companies that he has been. Let's say an example that say here you have uh, Sunil Sudhakar who is say first he was in Sipla, then he moved on to Ipka, then he moved on to Strikes. You will see the technology transfer from each of these companies because he is a researcher in his particular field. So you can mine a patent application, you can mine an invention by see by doing an inventor search. You can also do a company or an organization search also. Subject searching is the subject of your interest. So if you say if the uh, say paracetamol interests you, then that becomes your subject searching, which you can put either in the title, which is called as a title of your of the invention. You can put it in abstract, and you can do a claim search also. There are classification code searches also. I'm not going to take you through it. I'm not an expert in it. But if any, if it interests anyone, you can always go through it. I'll take you to the site where you can start doing the search. So international patent classification, every application that is filed, the moment any of the patent office receives the application, they will assign a code to it. So they will read the field of invention. So if your invention relates to the field of pharmaceuticals, they will assign an international classification of A61K. Similarly, if your invention deals with purely with chemistry, you will have C assigned to it. If your invention deals with any devices, there'll be another classification attached to it. So the moment your application is received by the patent offices, the examiners are going to first assign a classification code to your patent application. So this is a WIPO site that I was telling you, just put into Google WIPO patent office. They, it, this will retrieve this particular web page. So if you see the web page, you can do a field combination search. So if you have a WIPO publication number, put it in the value column. If you have a publication date, if you want to narrow down the range of when the application was filed, you can put the date. If you see below, there are offices given. So you can tick. So for example, you like I said, you wanted to, a paracetamol is your interest. You put paracetamol, say, in abstract, and you do an all search. So it is going to search in all the countries that are signatory to PCT. So, or if you are you want to narrow your search only to international application, you untick all and you just tick PCT. So this is a WIPO search. This is a USPTO for search. You are, like I said, a WIPO search, you can search any applications worldwide. But in US video, you can only search US applications, filed applications and granted applications. If you look through, you'll have searching full text patents. So which means that particular quick advance and patent search is going to search only granted patents. The one below that US video patent application full text search here, this will only search for applications which are filed and published, but not yet granted. So you can do a US video search. Similarly, an eSpace net search, you can put your search term either in the main search box or you can put your search term on the left hand side of the panel. So you can in the title or in the abstract, you can basically just play around this and you will yourself determine as to where you want to put your search word. One very big advantage of eSpace net search is it gives you the legal <clears throat> status also. So when you put your application, you will in the legal status column, you will determine whether the patent application has been granted or not. At what stage it's also is the prosecution. You can also retrieve the examination reports that are published, that are issued by the patent offices. You can also see the responses that are given by the patent applicant to the patent offices. So you can basically do, this is one of the best web searches that you can do on an eSpace net. Next is an Indian patent search. Uh, every Friday, the Indian Patent Office publishes bibliographic data of all applications that are filed 
and that are granted. If they are granted, usually they only cite the patent, Indian patent number. You can only do an Indian patent search here. You cannot do any other searches. You cannot do a US, US or an East space search. So basically, at one point of time, almost when I joined up Nair, almost say 16 years back, this was the only place that we could search, the Indian patent search, where we, every Friday, we would sit and download each of the Adopt folders and let it physically do each of the search. But uh, now they have improved upon the databases. This is how we used to do. We used to basically download all the journals that came every Friday and we'd search in a PDF search. And the biggest drawback being that we could only search the title and the abstract, the applicant and the inventor name. We couldn't search the entire specification. We couldn't search the claims. So basically we had to put in this and then go to the corresponding international application, look at the claims there, look at the specification there, and then determine that, okay, is this, does your uh, invention have patentability or does it have a PNS and FTO? Now, recently in the past almost 10 years, the patent office, Indian patent office has come up with their own patent search database. It is similar to WIPO, similar to USPTO, but it will only search Indian applications and or Indian granted patents, no other applications. So you put a title, you put your uh, application number if you have, or if you have any of the Indian patent, you just put on this and it will retrieve it. So these are the different patent databases that I have taken through you, uh, taken you through. If you want me to do a live search, do let me know. I can do it. Maybe we can spend another five or ten minutes. We are almost half an hour early that we finished our uh, presentation. Do let me know, uh, Dr. Nair. So done. Let's put it. So, I hope uh, Andrea was, has covered the petrol search areas and we are back uh, to, I am really extremely happy that uh, you have taken up this uh, session and it is very, very important that uh, in innovation, protection of innovations, very, very important in the uh, years to come. Especially, I think uh, patent publications, patent uh, pro uh, prosecution and protection is very important for an organization like you. I must compliment Dr. Sandosh Gandhi and uh, Dr. Uh, Monica Rao and all your colleagues, all the faculties for uh, sparing your valuable time to, to join us on this occasion. Uh, we are open for uh, uh, question and answers. And uh, whichever organization we are addressing uh, or which you are requested to address, we continue to support those organizations you, uh, even on a um, uh, general basis, unless very specific uh, requests for uh, patent uh, application filing, etc. But we are more liberal when we are already uh, associating with you as a partner. Thank you very much and um, compliment you for this initiative. God bless you. So we are half an hour early. We are half an hour early, so any questions can be. <laughs> the subject was rather, we, we of course cut short many things, hoping that we should not be exceeding the time. But uh, I hope you have done justice to the subject. If uh, you need any further explanation, please ask for us. Yeah. So thank you so much uh, for a really wonderful session. And also thank you to Andrea Fernandez, madam, uh, for joining us and giving her insights into patent mining. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yes, yes. very much. Uh, I would request the participants to put their questions in the chat. And in the meanwhile, sir, I would also like to ask a question. Uh, like, for example, if a particular carrier which is used in pharmaceuticals is patented, and if I use that carrier, I use that patent, I develop that carrier and use it for some application for drug delivery and publish it. So am I liable for any patent infringement? I just publish an academic research. A publication of academic research has nothing to do with patent infringement. Okay. Because your publication is not 
giving you any protection. You are not seeking any protection from that. Okay. So basically, let me, uh, since I have not uh, covered this in my, our presentation, I am very happy to cover it now. The entire process of patenting is for progression of science. In the, in, 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 in the 1800s, there was something called uh, the famous French Revolution. And following which, there were encouragement for new innovations, which was originally be done only by the kings and emperors in their court. And they were keeping the invention only for their use. Then the Paris committee decided to have exhibitions of new, uh, any invention, any new discovery. They wanted to exhibit and get more clients for the inventor or the uh, original owner of the invention. These exhibitions were po very popular in the beginning, but later it became, they, nobody was attending. Then they inquired into it, why they are not attending. Then they said, people are coming to copy. So nobody want to exhibit. So they said that they decided six countries together. Later it became 16. They became 60. Suddenly US also joined. Then Paris Convention started. Paris Convention is the mother, the Bhagavad Gita of intellectual property protection. So protection is very important. And protection of patents does not in any way why, why do you give a, a country grant a protection to a patent in return for publishing everything about the invention? You have to publish everything. Actually, there is something called a best mode or preferred embodiment. You have to disclose that in the patent application. Then you get a patent for full publication of your invention. And what is not mentioned in the patent uh, specification or publication he is not getting protected. So basically, this the purpose of this publication, in return for which a letter patent is granted, that publication is to create more research in the field. So your publication is not infringing at all. You can go on working on a patented uh, process or patented publication, make improvements. We you have your uh, further experiments. You can publish it. There is no infringement. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are a few questions in the chat also now. Uh, yeah. There is one question from our college. I think it's Tina, madam, Dr. Tina. Uh, regarding uh, Me Too inventions, how often is first in class not the best in class? That's the question. That is, a, that is anybody's guess because the first patent, first in the class for imaginative mesylate. Imagine if Meselet or Gleevec was the first in its class. But there were so many further nips have come. They are still continuing to come with very, very much improved applications and broader spectrum of um, uh, uh, medical use. So basically, the Me Too can be a sometimes a very big improvement on the original. There have been certain uh, molecules which had to be stored at extremely low temperature. So, so much so the formulations were becoming very difficult to access or transport and use. But there suddenly came new invention, which in the same class category, same uh, uh, what you call Me Too category, where the product could be stored at room temperature, can be transported at room temperature. Big breakthrough innovation. So even though the Me Too was thousand times more accessible for the patient than the original, which had to be uh, stored in very high, high, low temperatures. So basically, there is always uh, room for improvement. Yeah. So one more question from Dr. Ashlesha Pandit. Uh, she has asked that if she files a patent related to an apparatus design, and then later on, she has done some modification to the same apparatus. Does she need to file a separate patent or is there some sort of a, you know, extension possible? Very good yes. question. These are all things which uh, we miss out. You people are uh, extremely 
diligent to bring out what has been missed out okay so the gaps in our presentation <laughs> so basically a patent application can be filed according to us when to file a patent application as long as as soon as you find there is a potential innovation and the basic prior art search has been done you see probably novelty and inventorship is there then you file a provisional application provisional patent application and that provisional patent application <clears throat> need not be a complete application you can continue the research for next one year you can file a complete application any time within one year so that complete application may contain more details examples everything everything standards everything but the provisional from the date of filing provisional you are the owner of the invention so it should contain only one describe only one method of doing it it need not be done because based on your professor experience your faculty experience you can always predict how it can be made to work provisional application can be filed that way and in the due course you can file a complete application in in spite of having filed a provisional application you think there are more and more improvements coming before filing a complete you can file further provisionals and combine all your provisionals into one complete that is called a cognate application a complete cognate application can have more than one provisional filings and uh, the patent application which you have already filed as a complete to amend it is very difficult you cannot it is not possible to amend once it gets published etc but before grant of that complete application which you have already filed you are coming up with some improvement you feel that the device has now uh, be functioning better then you can file what is called a patent of addition that patent of addition need not be a stand alone independent novelty and inventive stuff you don't have to prove that improvement has to be novel that improvement over your what you have already filed which you find is useful that should be novel and inventive that addition and that addition patent application you can file or by saying the all the description all the contents of my patent application number dash 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 may be treated as covered as part of this addition patent application and then you can file an addition uh, describe the improvement part and claim on the improvement only and that addition patent will be what called a child patent the original patent application will be called a parent patent and child patent and parent patent will coexist even the new improvement which you are now filing will have priority date same as that of the parent application and they will both expire on the same date that you don't need to maintain the child patent you don't if you are filing an addition patent over a complete patent application which already filed and this is an improvement this you don't need to pay additional fee of maintenance for the addition patent both will coexist if the the original patent expires or is abandoned the addition patent also will get abandoned. at the same time if the improvement which you have now come up is having independent over and above the parent if it has independent novelty and inventive step you can file a completely independent application by while quoting the original parent application yeah i yes, hope sir. i have explained i i think so yes sir you have uh, satisfied the query i suppose and so there's one more question from dr gorge uh, of course this is a question i think which all academicians uh, will be thinking of because of the expense involved in filing a patent uh, whether uh, we can file the patent on our own without going through a patent agency or a patent agent very often very often you fumble 
very often you i i i i missed out my because it was patent mining even though i covered basics i did not cover some of the very valuable slides one slide is you can have a very good invention you can have an extremely good invention very useful invention very highly patentable invention but you draft it badly you can get a rejection or you are land up with a weak patent you may have a very weak invention very marginal invention okay you draft it cleverly okay and come up with a good specification and claims you can have a strong bit invention may be poor you can have a strong bit invention may be very rich and very good you can land up into a bad patent or a rejection patent a patent application this is because patent drafting is an art it is a story telling it is like javed akhtar writing a film uh, okay with all the contents of dialogue and climax and everything so we make it look like it is very essential for example yesterday only i advised somebody they came to me with a uh, invention and i told them in normal course i would have told you this is not patentable thank you very much okay because even though there is some he according to him he was making a definite improvement and definite convenience this is affected by obviousness of adding automation to a existing process but in the context what i told him i will get you the patent grant how i told him i will get the patent grant i will start with the covid story i will say in current times of covid pandemic it is very essential for avoiding manual contact with the product physical contact of human beings should be avoided with the final product to that extent we will have an automated packaging till it reaches the consumer there will be no manual contact so basically the uh, that gives me a story to write and to get a patent granted to meet the objections of the patent office on obviousness so basically drafting is very very clever drafting is essential it is possible for you to write a patent yourself and file provided you have a patent cell you have enabled somebody in your organization to understand the specification writing specification writing is not only a science but also an art so you have to start with a gap in the marketplace a need in the marketplace come up with the defects or shortcomings of the already existing prior art why it is not though the reaction has to be done at 180 degree temperature which cause more energy which cause more uh, uh, the inconvenience to people who are operator operator inconvenience the the uh, the, the um, solvent saving um, uh, solvent a uh, high cost of solvents i replace them with a temperature below 100 and i save more energy i more recoveries and i am coming up with an improvement that way we will write a story around it and come up with a new patent application which will get granted and also a patent proper uh, the, the there is a cat and mouse game between uh, the patent examiner and the patentee the patentee is often for example a very very famous professor he had come up with an invention <clears throat> that he had filed it himself we have messed it up he gave it to us we improved on it and the hearing was there patent hearing he insisted on coming with us to attend the patent hearing so in the hearing the examiner said no 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 this is not workable this is uh, i cannot grant you a patent on it 
and before we could open his mouth the in, big professor very famous professor told the examiner no 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 sir this is like everybody else is doing like this how can you say it is not workable all are doing like this so i told him sir sir please keep quiet let us argue you please keep quiet if all are doing it it is not tenable he doesn't uh, realize no. that so we had to keep him then we have to tell that uh, the professor did not understand your question he answered it wrongly and eventually we got it granted but very often the inventor lands himself in a soup when first examiner report is granted is uh, issued by the patent office it's called fpr the office action in response to your patent application there it is in us it is called a rejection letter here also the patent examiner and controllers are paid for finding fault with your invention why it cannot be granted every every fpr will say the patent cannot be granted because of the following reasons but it is for us to overcome that and come up with a proper uh, explanation and get the patent granted yeah so one more question from dr priyanka choudhary uh, she is asking about the confidentiality of the contents you know when we send our patent uh, details you know product details to the patent grant uh, analyst so whether we can rely on them for confidentiality 100% 100% why because currently in the last 5 to 7 years so everything is online the provisional patent application we are filing remains unopened provisional patent application once we are making a filing we will get a priority date but nobody looks at it it is not opened at all the filing remains as a filing it will give you protection when you file a complete application only the provisional will also be opened along with the complete and uh, everything is confidential the government the patent office appoints one patent controller to open the complete patent application for purpose of giving a classification number under strasberg treaty so every patent application if you see every patent granted or patent publication you will sign a classification number that classification number is to identify what is the field of technology what is the specific speciality about that those are all contained in a just one line one few numbers it is called a patent classification number and for that purpose it is open otherwise it will remain confidential till you are making for request for examination and it is assigned to an examiner so basically there is high degree of confidentiality and 100% it is uh, protected and the purpose of classification also the examiner who is assigned the duty of giving a classification number looks at what the title and the technical field the first of all, first this thing in a provisional application is called technical field this invention relates to dash 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 one sentence or two sentences that alone the examiner looks at and gives a classification number everything else remains provisional patent application is never published if you file a provisional application and don't file a complete within one year the provisional gets abandoned it goes into self self delete mode so basically there is tremendous amount of um, confidentiality either in uh, indian patent application or what is called pct international patent application all these are very very highly protected and confidential there is no uh, very rarely a physical filing is being done physical filing only time when you hand it over across the counter at the patent office the clerk looks at it or somebody may look at it because it is open but the online filings are not at all open i think even confidentiality yes. with the agent thank you sir confidentiality with the agent very important there is just like a doctor patient relationship if a patient comes with a, a disease which uh, normally would not like to discuss with public the the 
when you are coming to a patent lawyer there, there is a fiduciary relationship but more important than we insist most agents or um, most uh, proficient patent attorneys first thing if i get a call i take the email id i send a confidentiality agreement the confidentiality agreement has to be executed on 500 rupees term paper 500 rupees term there it was 100 rupees now this um, term duty is amended 500 rupees term paper means you can sue a patent attorney if any confidentiality is breached and uh, not only uh, the person who is uh, handling in their his entire team is bound with the confidentiality conditions so non disclosure non compete very very important in uh, and also there is something called a conflict check if your subject matter is conflicting with something else somebody else's same same field then we are not supposed to accept it and if i am representing a company um, which is a regular client of mine and if another company is approaching me which has a conflict with that company i am supposed to inform them sorry i am sorry please go to somebody else i have a conflict these are all ethics of the business of the uh, legal profession which we are especially in patent field and very often somebody asks me can you give me an example of this etc etc or you till it is published if the patent applications are published in the official journal of the patent office so once it is published we are free to discuss till it is published we are not free to discuss it happened in a, a field of uh, biofuels we were representing a, a very strong biofuel company and we were filing patent application somebody else asked they came to know we are representing them they wanted to know we said no we cannot discuss so basically these are we are bound by confidentiality and very high degree of confidentiality yeah yes thank you very much sir yeah. uh, another question should a life saving uh, or beneficial invention for human being be patented like so you yeah. answer that question sir yeah pardon you have you have answered that question already yeah it can be patented but there are ways and means that section 83 to section 103 of patent application 83 to 103 of patent act provides various ways and means to make it work means it can be accessed under various conditions compulsory license government use or any other uh, uh, method, it can be uh, made accessible. So basically, uh, uh, if it is a, 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 a unfair patent, there is fair and unfair patent. Then if it is unfair patent, that can easily be infringed. And for example, there is something called standard essential patents. Very big litigations and the Supreme Court of India, Supreme Court of US has handled Standard essential patents. Standard essential patents are SCPs. These are subject to frank terms, frank terms, fair and reasonable, non-discriminatory non terms. So basically, when automobiles, mobile phones, computers, aeroplanes, and uh, uh, the, there are hundreds or thousands of patents are involved in operating them. So the moment I decide to start an automobile company, I can access all the patents and use them provided I pay a nominal license fee, which may be $1,000 or $500 for each of the patents. These are called standard essential patents. Without using which you cannot uh, uh, produce a product. Those are called SCPs. So these are all provisions that are available in the uh, system. Thank you, sir. There were a lot of questions and you have answered them very enthusiastically. And I'm sure that uh, the doubts have been cleared. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Gopakumar Nair on behalf of management.
of AISSMS College of Pharmacy, principal and faculty of Pharmacy College and all the delegates for giving us a deep insight and exhaustive insight into patent mining, sir. And uh, in such an enthusiastic way at a sprightly young age of 80 years and above, sir. It was a great... <laughs> It was really a great pleasure uh, and uh, regard, sir, to have you all with us amongst you, sir. So please, amongst us, sir, and so please accept this uh, certificate, e-certificate, as a token of our respect and regard for you, sir, and you. for sparing your valuable time for us. Sir. Thank you very Beautiful. much. Beautiful. Beautiful, yes, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Have a great day. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you sir. Thank you, Dr. Sandush. God bless you. Uh, Dandi sir, are there any announcements? Yeah, uh, request to uh, all the participants uh, to uh, fill the feedback link which has been posted in the chat box uh, as well as uh, it has been posted in the WhatsApp group also. So uh, see that you fill it uh, before uh, 7 uh, p.m. And uh, join uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 9.25 a.m. Thank you. So I will end the meeting. Yes, madam. <laughs>